So today on the show, we're finally gonna talk about Flex Mentallo, a comic that will change your life. And then I'm gonna tell you about why Grant Morrison and Frank Quitley are the dream team in comics. And then I'm gonna tell you about their creation, my favorite character, Quentin Quire, the Kid Omega. Welcome to the Comic Book Girl 19 show! The inspiration for Flex Mentallo came from the real life character of Charles Atlas. And to appreciate this comic, you need to know a little bit more about Charles Atlas and his charming ads of the 1940s. This guy was like one of the first bodybuilder exercise gurus ever. And he became popular, rising to fame through the medium of comic books. These Charles Atlas comic book ads would famously tell the story of a kid named Matt. Ah, what a lovely day at the beach, Jenny. Oh no, Jenny, maybe we better go inside. Here comes that big gorilla Gus. Afraid he'll bite you, little boy? Well, skinny mech, run along now. Alice and I are stepping out. But Alice has a date with me. Oh. Maybe she did have one, but not now, you skinny weakling. <laughs> Sorry, Mac, but I can't help it if you're so helpless. You weakling, he called me. I'll make him eat those words. I'll send for a free Charles Atlas book and find out how to become a real man. Boy, Atlas really builds men fast. Just look at these muscles. Now watch me show up that big show off. What? You here again? Scram before I- Oh yeah? Take that. Wham! Oh Mac, you're so wonderful. What a He-Man you got to be. In later versions of the ad, after beating up the bully, all the onlookers cheer and declare him Hero of the Beach. It's a very cute story in its simplicity and possibly one of the first anti-bullying campaigns ever. And this story supposedly actually happened to Charles Atlas when he was a skinny little kid. And now that you understand the history of the Charles Atlas comic book ad campaign, which was one of the most memorable ad campaigns of all time, you'll appreciate this as a springboard for the parody that Flex Mentallo derives itself from. Flex is supposed to literally be the character of Mac that everyone remembers from the Charles Atlas ad. Flex's origin is essentially a parody of the Charles Atlas ad. Flex is a scrawny Mac and he gets sand kicked in his face and he goes and he buys this book, Muscle Mystery for You, and then he gets all these muscles, he comes back, he beats the guy's ass just like in the ad, but only this time he learns that he can also alter reality while flexing even harder. And then when Hero of the Beach comes up, it's like a hero halo over his head, which is awesome. And the kicker is at the end he gets the girl back, but then he tells her to like, fuck off because he doesn't need a tramp like her anymore. And she like cries and is sad about it. And he walks off like all muscle bound. And with his new powers, he decides to become a superhero and joins the Doom Patrol. So to really understand what Flex Mentallo is about at its core, you need to know more about Grant Morrison, the occult, metaphysics, chaos magic. Yeah, well, Flex Mandibles might have metaphysa what's in it, but does it have chicks with huge knockers like this? Oh God, thank, thank God it doesn't. Thank God it doesn't. No, robot, there are no exploding tits. <sighs> Grant Morrison is an occultist and a practitioner of chaos magic. Now there are other occultists in comics, but I digress. Grant Morrison is also a seed planter. He's using this vehicle to inspire millions to introduce all of us to the esoteric. What does esoteric mean? You know, esoteric, like, the, the great mysteries like magic and tarot and astrology and hidden knowledge. You know, just because the comic book uses big words doesn't mean it's what everyone needs in a comic book. You're right, okay, I mean, I guess. Take Wildcats, for example. Oh. Wildcats has Rip Claw in it. He's a guy with six inch claws instead of fingers. He's a super badass, and in this issue, he's fighting this other guy, Warblade, who has 15 inch Warpy, stretchy claw fingers. Oh my god, that's brilliant. Now that's what a comic book needs. Okay, that is not what comic books need in any way, shape, or form. Anyways, this comic is for intelligent people. It's for philosophers. It's not for amateur robots. <laughs> what Flex Mentallo is about at its core is about finding the path to enlightenment and the path to wisdom. Ah, uh, boring. It's a tough challenge, but I mean, the main theme of the story is that the heroes are inside of us, you know, we can be them. So why is Flex Mentallo so good? Flex Mentallo is so good, it hurts. It's brilliant, 
it connects on all these different levels. It's gonna show you the path to enlightenment. The Flex Mentalo is so good. How come I never heard of it? Well, up until recently, Flex Mentalo really wasn't available unless you had the original copies because the Charles Atlas Company was trying to sue DC over Flex Mentalo. I've heard that the original issues used to go for like crazy amounts of money because you just couldn't get your hands on this comic. Well, finally, the case was dropped, DC won. What is Flex Mentalo's power? So Flexman Tallow's power is using the mechanics of muscle mystery. He can, for example, flex a bicep real quick and then explode the ground in front of him. I guess he flexes his muscles and shit happens. One time he flexed so hard that he turned the Pentagon into a fucking circle. Try that fucking hat on. Oh man, this is really cool. In Wildcats number five, Spartan, a cyborg robot badass, comes on the scene of a crime. And then the, the bad guys are all gone, right? And he can't do anything. So he pulls out this like thingamabobber device, uh, Gizmo Auto, from his belt. And then the device lets him be able to see back in time to see what happened like an hour ago at the scene. And then they totally know where the bad guys went. It's awesome. Uh, that is the dumbest fucking thing I have ever heard in my life, okay? No, it's super badass and extreme. Does Flex Mentalo have extreme characters like Shaft, Riptide, Bad Rock, Die Hard, Cougar, Supreme, Photon? Wait, stop, stop. All these characters are from like shitty 90s comics and nobody even knows who these people are. Why, why, are, why are you reading all these shitty 90s comics? I, I was built in the 90s and I feel a close bond to 90s comic books. Fair enough. Today comic yeah. books are all shallow and don't go to extremes like the classics used to. <laughs> The, wait, wait, what, the classics? Yeah, 90s comics are classic now, by definition. And being classic means they're smart and intellectual. Unlike your Flexman Joblo, that nobody understands, comics today are too subtle and all about the story these days. I want extreme adrenaline-filled situations and extreme maximum characters with giant, ultra-shiny muscles and enormous guns and huge exploding tits. <laughs> you see, everything was just bigger and better in the 90s. <laughs> like characters like Blood Claw Rip Shaft Pouch? <laughs> yeah, now you're talking my language. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> and another thing, Flexman Tallow doesn't feature an abundance of biblical-influenced characters oh. like <laughs> Chapel, Angel, Tiffany. <laughs> you can't even say it. You can't even say it, asshole. You know, you're right. You're right, robot. You're right. Because everybody knows that including biblical themes and names makes a comic book controversial and deep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody remembers Rip Fart from the 90s. We're going to continue this Flex Mentality discussion in part two. But first, I'm going to tell you about why I love Grant Morrison and Frank Whitley. Damn, those guys are like two peas in a creative pod. Frank Whitley's artwork perfectly complements Grant Morrison's writing, okay? They both do superheroes really well, but with their own weird non superhero y twist, okay? Morrison doesn't write your average comic, and Quitley doesn't draw your average hero. And if you guys don't want to take my word for it, those guys won a shit ton of Eisners for their masterpiece, All-Star Superman. What's an Eisner Award? An Eisner Award is like the Oscars for comic books. They have also won or been nominated for other awards for their work on We Three, Batman and Robin, and the new X-Men. Not only have these guys created some of my favorite comics, but they've also created some of my favorite new characters. Next, I'm going to talk about my ex-crush, Kid Omega. Number one, growing up, I had a huge potential to turn to the dark side, just like Quentin does, okay? And I'm rooting for him to become the most awesome anti-hero I know that he can be. Number two, we're both skeptics. We aren't fooled by all the shit with Sophie was so sad. What a bummer. And I love the fact that he keeps hitting on black girls now. I can get behind that. And number four, we're both snazzy dressers. If I was an X-Man, I would be Kid Omega, for sure. No doubt. Where he came from, you know, he first appeared in New X-Men. Grant Morrison and Frank Quitley came up with his character. It rocked it and that started a riot, you know, all this crazy nonsense happened. I mean, he was so much fun to read then. I think Kid Omega is significant for several reasons. One of the reasons is that obviously, and he says it all the time, he's an Omega level mutant, okay? This guy is a badass. There's only like 200 mutants left and this guy is of the upper echelon of these motherfuckers, okay? He can like, 
He, on a whim, came up with a psychic shotgun when he was trying to rob Planet Sin with Wolverine in Wolverine and the X-Men when they're trying to get funding for their school because Angel was incompetent, I guess. Amazing. He thinks to himself, I've seen Psylocke do it. You know, I've seen other people do it. Why can't I do that? Bam, psychic shotgun. Ruins everybody. I think Quentin would be an excellent host for the Phoenix. In fact, he's been hinted at having the Phoenix several times. Okay, you've seen him in the future as like a potential leader of the X-Men with the Phoenix. You've also seen him like in the past, like in the white hot room with Jean from like an alternate dimension where he is the Phoenix. Okay, he is obviously capable of handling that shit. All right, so I think at some point Quentin will be the Phoenix. I hope so. I hope so, because he would be pretty fucking badass, you know, even more so. So in review, I would say keep your eye on Kid Omega because he could be like the X-Men's worst villain. He could be the leader of the X-Men. You don't even know, you know, this character could go so many different ways and it's so much fun to watch him develop. I have a Kid Omega tattoo, all right? How many people do you know who have some retarded Quentin Choir tattoo? Bill loves Kid Omega. Look at her, she loves him. She loves him. She loves him. She loves him. Can I have my hand back? No. It's a no. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which is another way of saying that magicians embrace the magic within themselves, which is another way of